Happy whatever day I decide to upload this. Uh, Christmas, Boxing Day, New Year's, etc. I don't know. Hope y'all are enjoying your day. This is just a quick little upload with just a little hype for games that are coming out next year. Who knows, maybe you'll find out about the game and like it too. With that, I don't see a reason to keep dragging it out, so let's just jump into it. I love Wario. I can't help it. I love this greedy scoundrel. The Wario Land games are unbridled, creative, fun games, and I love them. Unfortunately, the most recent one to come out was Wario Land Shake It on the Wii in 2008, and Nintendo has decided to stop with Wario Land and focus more on WarioWare. But if Nintendo won't make Wario Land games, I guess we will. Enter Pizza Tower. I am so upset that I did not know about this game sooner. This game has been in the works since 2018, probably earlier, if you include that all the sprites are hand-drawn. Yeah, that's one of the huge pluses in the Pizza Tower. All of these sprites have such amazing style and presentation. It looks like it's Ren and Stimpy or early SpongeBob or like, you know, really early 90s cartoons. I know SpongeBob came out in the late 90s, but shh. This game looks like it's gonna be amazing to watch other people play, but it is a Wario Land styled game. So it's also gonna be really fun to play. My evidence, I played the demo from 2019. It's so good. I'm sorry, I'm gonna totally nerd out for a sec. They totally combined Wario's exploration and secrets with Sonic the Hedgehog's speed and momentum with Ren and Stimpy's over the top animation and faces. I am so hyped for this game. Coming out January 26th, 2023, it looks like it's gonna be one heck of a time. Very sorry, Italy. Do I even need to mention how big of a success Hollow Knight is? It's easily one of my favorite games of all time. Everything from music sucking you into the world to extremely fast-paced action to just a great sense of exploration. It's easily one of my favorite Metroidvanias. And Metroidvania is one of my favorite genres of video games. So imagine 2019 when Silk Song was announced, the sequel to Hollow Knight. I, and a lot of other people, could not stop screaming about how happy we were that this new game starring Hornet was gonna come out. And then we waited. And then we waited. I know game development's hard. I understand that they had, like, so many new ideas, fine tunings that they needed to make. But man, we know for a fact, thanks to Xbox of all companies, that this game will come out in 2023. It's gonna be four years since it was announced, which, you know, sometimes isn't that bad, but, but there were only two trailers that I can think of. The one in 2019, and the one in 2022 where Xbox said that it was gonna come out this year. With that said, I'm so excited for Silk Song. Christopher Larkin, the guy who made the Hollow Knight soundtrack, has shared two songs on his YouTube channel. They got enough money for an actual orchestra instead of just programmed instruments like in Hollow Knight. And I already love the Hollow Knight soundtrack, so imagine how great the Silk Song soundtrack is gonna be. Hornet looks to play a lot faster than the Knight does, which is gonna be fun. Overall, I am very excited for Silk Song and might be jumping the shark here, but I'm gonna say, it was probably worth the wait. A while ago, I learned of a company called Devolver Digital. They partner with indie games and sell them on a wider scale. You might know them from the game Cult of the Lamb, but me, I know them from my friend Pedro. Uh, side note, before we get into the game that I'm gonna talk about, please play My Friend Pedro. It is one of the coolest games you'll ever see. You can do all sorts of crazy gun tricks, like hanging from ropes with pistols on either hand shooting bad guys. Plus, there's a talking banana. It's all good stuff. Now, with that said, this new game coming out from Devolver Digital doesn't look anything like Cult of the Lamb or My Friend Pedro, which, you know, makes sense because it's different gaming developers. Enter the Plucky Squire. If you're familiar with the series Paper Mario, you're gonna have a great time with the Plucky Squire. The world looks like the desk of an artist and it's amazing. The player character can jump out of the notebook and move and interact with the 3D environment. Interacting with the designs on coffee mugs or climbing up stuff, it's so fun to look at. If you're a fan of classic Legend of Zelda video games, you're probably gonna like this game because it plays like a classic Nintendo Legend of Zelda game. 
you see from an overhead perspective. Sometimes it depends on what you're running around. You have a big old sword and you slash through enemies while the great music is playing. I'm gonna have a great time with this game and I sincerely recommend that you check it out because I have a feeling you'll like it too. When I tell you that the title of this next game is gonna be called Another Crab's Treasure, what kind of game do you think it'll be? Maybe it'll be like Minecraft and you gather resources and try to survive, or maybe it's like Animal Crossing and you try to have a nice peaceful time with gathering resources. It's Dark Souls. You heard me right. A very difficult, very unfair RPG about crabs. Not just that, it's also very bright and colorful, and it looks like it's gonna be an amazing time. I got Elden Ring last year, I had an absolute blast. And now that this indie game is gonna try and take a formula and make their own version of it, looks like it's gonna be a great time. I am so excited for another crab's treasure. You know how there's an ongoing debate about whether or not video games could be classified as art? There are obvious examples for and against this argument. I would classify Celeste as a video game that could classify as art. But for every Celeste, there are three Super Marios. Which don't get me wrong, I love Super Mario, but I'd compare Super Mario of the video game industry to maybe Marvel or Disney of the movie industry. There are very fun adventures and every once in a while they do something unique and fun that could actually warrant a discussion of being art, but for the most part it's kinda just similar looking stuff over and over. Anytime someone says a video game could never be classified as art, I tell them to look at the indie scene the way they should look at the indie scene of a movie for the art and for passion and for using the medium as a way to share a story or a personal event or ideas and Planet of Lana looks like it's gonna be perfect for the argument of video- Ah, <laughs> my throat! <laughs> I got so close to saying that and delivering a nice heartfelt message! Man! It looks like Planet of Lana will work for the argument of video games being classified as art. Everything about this game, from the way everything moves, to the world of storytelling that you don't need crammed down your throat and you can just take in on your own, to the amazing atmospheric music, Planet of Lana is definitely on my top list of games to check out in 2023. Whether you're just looking for a nice puzzle game, or if you want to see that crazy argument that video games could be classified as art, this is gonna be right up there. Wow, what a bad way to end that statement. Wow, I couldn't come up with anything more profound. And there we have some indie games that I'm hyped for coming 2023. Comment below which ones you're excited for because Lord knows I've forgotten some good gems out there. With that said, thank you for watching. Goodbye.